Good morning. Welcome again to Nicewood Congregational Church Online. This is Sunday the 12th of July. We have been in virtual lockdown since the end of March and I know that so many of us are hoping that the First Minister will announce something to our mutual benefit on the, the 9th of July when she holds her briefing. You know, the, the parable of the sower and the, the seed, it kind of makes me think, I, I personally love gardening. And even though I share a, a communal garden, I do like to plant little bits of cuttings or whatever here and there in the very few areas of soil that are available. Because most of our garden is grass. And I've had to cut that during this um, lockdown season as our maintenance um, team have been furloughed. And to be totally honest with you, I am, I've enjoyed cutting it because in my view I do a better job. But I also have a neighbour who regularly contributes in the garden and she's regularly active. So when we do plant, we tend to plant together in conjunction. And there are, it's a bit of a mix mash, as you would expect. But it's very tidy, it's neat, and it's, it's manageable. Jesus tells us today about seeds and soils. A farmer goes out into his field. The farmer we know is God. Now, every gardener, every farmer, anybody who's involved in any sort of agriculture, all know that there are different types of soil and there are two basic ways in which to sow seed. So when I can purchase an expensive seed packet that I want to see if it will grow, I carefully make little holes, evenly spaced apart, regimentally in a row. And I carefully take the seed and I place it in a depth, just the right depth for watering. Because I'm trying to get the most out of that packet, especially if it's expensive. And it's a scarce sort of seed. But I've also once scattered wildflower seeds. And they produced absolutely beautiful results. But I didn't have to worry about placing them. I just threw them, like throwing caution to the wind. I just aimed them in the general direction. Where I would think that I would like to see them grow. And they let the breeze and the soil do the rest. And that is of course called... Broadcast sowing. God is a broadcast sower. And that's what this wonderful parable says. The word of God is rich and wonderful, bountiful and full of life, full of possibilities. And for the person who would care to notice, it is sown everywhere, scattered abundantly throughout creation by a God who loves to bring good fruit from the ground. Yet our gospel is just so plentiful that we too often neither notice nor do we value it. And it often carries with it every possibility, every potential, every hope, every joy. It is the very stuff of life. He scatters wherever the breeze of his Holy Spirit will carry it. If it doesn't take root, or it doesn't produce fruit. It's not the seed's fault. Nor is it the sower's fault. Nor is it the lack of seed. The fault, he says, lies in the ground that receives it. I really struggled with that at one point. I had a bit of a situation and, and I went and spoke to a, a very good friend of mine, a, a colleague of mine. Um, he's a, a veteran minister, I suppose I am too. But, but during our chat, we had exchanged stories of preaching and how some days were not as we are on my ball as we would like to be. And sometimes like on Zoom or on YouTube. We're so uncomfortable, it takes us right out with our zone. Um, and we were talking about responses that we've received after preaching, like nice hymns, or 
That was a good sermon today. And as they walk past someone, they say, I don't know what he was talking about. <laughs> I think every minister could share a story like that. Every preacher, every priest, probably rabbi and Greek Orthodox and the rest. So I remember sharing the story of telling this that my veteran friend that how a very small group of people were quite vociferous with comments when I first arrived in my church. Some of the comments were camouflage and kindness. And some were just, as others would say to me because they had overheard, they were just snide comments and often just totally missed the point of preaching. In fairness to them as well, they had just been in vacancy for a while and everything was still being compared back to their former um, minister. So there was always that sort of, every minister faces that. It's not a new thing. And so my veteran colleague asked me a question which really took me by, uh, I wasn't prepared for it. He asked me if they had come prepared to receive the word? Do they come prepared to be an active part of the congregation or do they come and just be passive attenders at the church? Were they prepared like good soil? Were they prepared to give and participate in all the aspects of worship? And then he said, are they good soil or are they boulders or a mixture of soil and rock? I honestly couldn't answer that because I couldn't make a judgment. <clears throat> Only those who are present would perhaps be able to reflect on that question and say, am I good soil? Am I a boulder? Am I a rock? You know, some folks think all it takes to plant a garden is to break a hole in the ground, put in a plant, and if that's not enough, then we'll douse it with chemicals and fertilisers to make it grow, herbicides to kill off the weeds, and bug spray to kill off the slugs and the insects. And they belong to a society which believes in a better living through chemistry and instant gratification. They believe that anyone who can read a label can actually be a gardener. And the message Jesus delivers about the soils is clear. Good soils, good soils produces good fruit. And bad soils just do not produce. But there is another lesson here that we may not be find so clear to us. How God is the good farmer. He's patient and he's wise. He can work even the rocky ground into a, a fine tilth, given time and given the opportunity. So there is hope. There is hope for bad, rocky, weedy, sour, clay and rubble soils. There is hope for planting, for growing. And it made me think, read this verse from the Bible and my colleagues' words. What kind of soil are you? Do you see yourself as being outside the pale of God's grace? Not looking or expecting anything of his promised gifts. Or perhaps your stony soil. Do the hard places, the, the hard questions of life choke out the joy of your faith? Do you find it easy to become embittered because you cannot understand or accept the hard or difficult things that have happened in your life? We then have to accept if it's our bitterness and not that of God's 
and it's not a lack of God's love for us. It's not a lack of God's love that stands between you and the joy, between us and the joy. Seeds of his love are continually falling upon your life if you will accept them. Or are you thorny soil? With so many other concerns that the joy of being God's child just seems to be beside the point. Consider this. There is no other real joy in life. We are made to be good soil. We are made to receive him. And that's the purpose of soil, to grow things. And if we miss that, we have missed the point of life. To grow in his likeness as his children. Paul said that he considered every other concern in life nothing more than trash that got in the way. Like a cluttered closet when we cannot find what we need anymore. Do you need to get rid of the weeds and get back to basics in your life? This lockdown has no doubt made us all reflect and review many things that we do. But remember this. Even good soil requires care and maintenance. And the good news is that we have a good gardener. God is the good gardener. The one who waits patiently with us, building us up with that rich till that we may produce good fruit. And so how do we care for and maintain that soil? By being faithful. To God by being faithful to God in prayer, by being faithful by putting our trust in Him. And that's how, that's how we become fruitful. May God bless you this day. Amen.